What's up, guys? Jerry Miller. It's good to be with you on a Wednesday. Thank you kindly for joining us on the I Love Seville show. We are live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville network. One of my favorite things to do with you each day is to connect with you guys through this very platform. And today's program is jam-packed. We have a phenomenal show we're going to uh, welcome a restaurateur, an entrepreneur, a businesswoman of, of tremendous proportions um, in Kelly Jackson. She owns the co-owner of 16 Panera Bread stores in this market, in this area, 16 of them. We're going to kind of catch the pulse of the business, see how COVID-19 has impacted um, this family business um, and see how they're rebounding. We're going to spotlight what it's like to run... I mean, you're looking at you're looking at the 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 top um, restaurant, um, the top restaurant empire probably in this area. We have Andy McClure's and the Wilson Ritchies and the Corin Capshaws that are involved with you know brands that we see on the downtown mall like Mas Tapas or Citizen Burger Bar or the Whiskey Jar or the Bebedero, you know brands like that. When you have a scale of 16 stores. You got a lot of systems in place that I'm excited to talk about, and I'm excited to see how those systems, the supply chain, how marketplace has responded to maybe curbside and drive through more instead of coming in. I mean, these stores position much better than a lot of restaurants because of the drive through. We know that. We've seen what Starbucks has been doing. We saw how quickly Bodo's Bagels changed to a drive through model, and we saw how Bodo's Bagels exploded um, with the drive through model. So I, I, I have a lot I want to talk about with Kelly, um, with her model here on the show. Uh, I encourage you guys, if you're a fan of Kelly Jackson, if you're a fan of our second guest, he is Daniel Kaufman. He's the restaurant owner, the restaurateur behind Public Fish and Oyster, one of the best happy hours in Charlottesville is at Public Fish and Oyster. I love this man's restaurant. Uh, he's a co-owner in Pronto Fresh Pasta on the corner, two very different businesses. We were talking about this on the I Love Seville Network yesterday with Andre Xavier, with Jeff Bibb, with Russ Haley a couple of other restaurants, restaurant owners, and Daniel Kaufman about, about with the reopening happening, so many team members still um, on, on, on unemployment and the opportunity to earn more income on unemployment than on a restaurant that's opening in phase two at limited capacity. It's going to be difficult to get people to come and work at the restaurant. So think about that. We're going to analyze that dynamic and spotlight a phenomenal brand and public fish and oyster that needs our patronage and support. We are an advertising agency here at I Love Seville. We're very grateful for Panera Bread for giving us lunch today. Lunch for the team. Thank you. I'm enjoying a fabulous iced coffee. I had a Cuban sandwich. Um, I had a broccoli cheddar bowl, which was amazing. And uh, the team had uh, some sandwiches as well, so thank you to Panera. I'm ready to run headlines. Before we do, we're an advertising agency, and we work with small businesses from New Providence, New Jersey, where we have a satellite office, and I travel up there often to service New Providence Chiropractic and the Autism Foundation of New Jersey, um, all the way down to Asheville, North Carolina. Our, the majority of our clients in, in the Commonwealth, however, two of our favorites, Interstate Pest and Service Companies, and Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. I was with the second generation owner of Interstate Pest and Service Companies, Mr. Greg Wells, um, last week for a fabulous TV spot he did for NBC 29. And in the process of talking, you know, setting up for the spot, Mr. Wells and I got talking, and I was just very taken aback with how much concern he had for his team members, um, and their safety and their health, um, and also the customers. So I was impressed. I was impressed. Same with Dr. Wagner. He's changing people's lives through sports medicine, physical therapy, and chiropractic care. Dr. Wagner changing people's lives. I've seen it with eight years of working alongside Dr. Wagner and his staff. I'm ready to run headlines. I think undoubtedly Judah Wickhauer, he's our director, Lauren, a producer on this program as well. I, I, I think undoubtedly the first headline, Judah Wickhauer, is Ralph Northrum, the governor, and the phase two announcement from yesterday. Why don't we get the first uh, graphic on screen with some of the protocols? So the one that immediately catches all our attention is restaurants at 50% reopening capacity inside. They still have the patios, which they were allowed to open. Now they get 50% seating inside. 
Gyms, I mean, how I, I miss ACAC so much. ACAC was my second home. I was at ACAC downtown five or six days a week playing racquetball. It was my stress outlet. Gyms like ACAC, like the YMCA and boutique gyms across the area, they're able to reopen at 30% capacity. Recreational sports can resume. Entertainment venues can resume in limited capacity. And social gatherings go from 10 to 50 people. So let's get into the numbers and let's analyze this. First, I want to say this. You obviously are seeing someone who's a medical doctor and Ralph Northrum, the governor of Virginia, you see a medical doctor without question have his position of science and medicine be pressured and changed by capitalism, by lobbyists, by voters, by mayors across Virginia, and by constituents that are business owners and, 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 and have business interests. Ralph Northrum, in the middle of COVID, in the start of COVID-19, said, we're going to be long game here. And he had clear benchmarks for phase one and phase two reopening. Clear benchmarks. And those benchmarks haven't been met. While we're approaching those benchmarks, they have not been met. So let's cut to the chase. A doctor influenced and now acting like a politician. That's important to emphasize. I'm not hating on him for that. And we'll switch to this one over here, Judah. I'm not hating on him for that. That's the nature of America. Okay? You may go into office as a doctor, but you're going to come out of office as a position-changing politician who's had his past searched and scoured and has had his every move questioned, including two weekends ago in Virginia Beach. So a doctor has become a politician before our, our very eyes. Now, let's go to the restaurants. 50% inside reopening for the restaurants. What does that say to you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you as a restaurant can open your patio, which you can, and you can open your dining room now at 50% capacity, which you can, I will say this. Any restaurant in... The area, Charlottesville, Albemarle County, Central Virginia, has got to be thinking reopening now because the clock is undoubtedly ticking and starting on their rent payments. They undoubtedly, the, restaurant, the restaurants and the small business owners, undoubtedly got a rent break because of COVID-19. But as the governor reopens the economy and as we mature from phase one to phase two, Right, Judah? As we mature from phase one to phase two, you know the landlords have started the clock again. So, as a result, as smart people and as people who can analyze trends and new cycles and figure out where the market is going, and that's what our I Love Seville family is, we know that if you can open at 50% capacity inside, if you can open at full capacity, not full capacity, but a fair amount of capacity on your patio, and we know if your rent has started, because phase two is now upon us, you probably should open. And the ones that don't are the ones that probably will not reopen. So now with phase two, with the economy clearly reopening, we have more marketplace pressure for businesses to reopen. You have customers coming in the doors. You have landlords starting rents. You have the weather getting nice. You have COVID-19 numbers improving. You have consumer confidence getting back to normal. You have the media cycle now covering George Floyd's murder and not COVID-19 as much. So things are changing. If you don't open now, or if you don't open in the next couple of weeks, 30 days, you're probably not going to reopen. And we'll see now, as we head into summer, which ones, um, which ones, for lack of a better phrase, suffered a COVID-19 death. And I'm talking the businesses, because that's what it would be. Okay, follow that closely. Next story I want to cover very, very, um, very closely is, is how um, the protests and COVID-19 are mingled. We've had nationwide protests consume America for seven or eight days. Is that fair? I think that's fair. 
Seven or eight days, protests across the nation have consumed the country. One thing that these protests are not mindful of is social distancing and health and preventing the spread of COVID. So as an analytical person, and I'm, I'm a businessman and an entrepreneur, uh, I invest heavily on the stock market from a day-to-day standpoint and invest heavily in real estate. My entire mindset is analytical, balance sheets, P&Ls, numbers. So as an analytical entrepreneur, I see nationwide protests that are paying no respect to social distancing and health and, and, and stopping the spread of COVID. So as an analytical mind, I think this is a fair statement. If we do not see massive breakouts because of COVID, because of these nationwide protests in the next couple of weeks, three, four weeks, month, Remember, you can be asymptomatic for a little while. If we don't see massive breakouts because of these nationwide protests, that speaks a lot of where we are with moving past potentially COVID. Again, I'm going to cut to the chase. Nationwide protests, people close together, not thinking about being safe and not spreading the disease. If the metrics don't spike... That says something about where we are with COVID-19. Yes or no? You could disagree with me there. I, I, we're essentially nationwide in, in, in sardines in urban environments across the country. If the numbers don't get higher, then you've got to be a little bit more confident that this COVID-19 situation is improving. You've got to be. If you disagree, put it in the stream. Kamani Shore, the musician watching the program, Kamani Shore says, I love Public and Daniel Kaufman. Guadalajara just shared the stream. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny Ornales, for sharing the stream. Thank you, Stephanie Wells Rhodes, for sharing the stream. Hammer the like button now for us, if you could, just like Tim did in Crozet. Thank you, Tim, for hammering the like button, guys. Kelly Jackson's going to join us in T minus 10 minutes. Daniel Kaufman at 115. We're going to spotlight restaurants from very different sides of the spectrum, both locally owned. One, 16 Panera Breads and Kelly Jackson. One, Public Fish and Oyster and Pronto. Um, pasta on the UVA corner and Daniel Kaufman. A lot, a lot of dynamics to talk about there. I'm excited about speaking with both um, entrepreneurs. I want to go to another topic. Jen Finazzo, love you, Jen Finazzo. Sal's Cafe Italia, love Jen Finazzo. Megan Garvin, Jamie Schwartz, hello. You guys just liking the sharing the show. I love you guys. Another topic I want to cover. With real estate, what is the phrase... Um, or is the word axiom, Judah, axiom for phrase? Okay. So location, location, location with real estate. Is that an axiom? All right. So with real estate, the old axiom is location, location, location. And that's whether you're opening up a business. That's whether you're buying an investment property. That's whether you're buying your forever home. Location, location, location. Well, ladies and gentlemen, maybe that axiom is becoming antiquated because of the ubiquitous nature of technology, because of the approachability of technology. And get the sizzle reel ready to play, Judah. Yesterday, we were chit-chatting, a little chitter-chatter, with Quentin Beckham. Quentin Beckham is a broker locally with Keller Williams, just a fantastic person. He is previously um, either the incoming or was the president of CAR. Someone help me out there with Quentin Beckham. Someone tag Quentin Beckham in the stream right here. I love Quentin Beckham. Quentin Beckham either was the president or is the coming president of CAR, the Association of Realtors in in, in the area. I respect this guy tremendously. Someone tag Quentin uh, Beckham. Welcome, Jesse Rutherford, to the show. Debbie Brewer, hello. Um, And I'm talking with Quentin Beckham about real estate in COVID-19. And we're already seeing this in Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Prepare yourselves for this, ladies and gentlemen. We are already seeing this. Incoming president of CAR. Thank you, Yona Smith. Yona Smith always keeps me on my toes. She's a brilliant woman. Quentin Beckham, the incoming president of CAR. We are already seeing in Charlottesville and Central Virginia, because of COVID, people flooding from Northern Virginia, D.C., 
from New York City, from Connecticut and New Jersey, from Atlanta, and urban environments around Charlottesville. We're already seeing people coming to Charlottesville, to Central Virginia, to Albemarle County, and buying real estate because of COVID. We're already seeing it. You're seeing people selling their homes in, 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 in the Northeast and urban environments for 700K, a million, million two, and bringing Yankee money down. I got no problem with the Yankees. My wife's a Yankee. I love Yankees, okay? But bringing Yankee money down and buying up the little inventory here. As a result, we're seeing the house of the, 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 the cost of goods, the cost of stock increase. So here's the question, and here's the statement I have for you, and here is something you freaking better watch. Watch this. And if you're a homeowner, you're in a good position. If you're on the cusp of trying to be a homeowner, buy a home in the next 60, 90, buy a home now if you can, okay? If you continue to get Northern Virginia and New York and New Jersey and Connecticut and Atlanta money flooding Charlottesville and Central Virginia because these urban environments are hot spots for COVID because they don't have offer the back room luxury or the back room freedom or the, the space to, to live, work, and play at a home because of COVID. Okay, because you're on top of your neighbors. If they flood Charlottesville and Central Virginia, the, the, the pricing, the house of stock is going to go up. So if you own a home, you're in a good spot. If you're thinking about buying a home, do it now. And Quentin Beckham said this, the location, location, location axiom may not be as important anymore because you can do, you can work from anywhere now thanks to Zoom. Previously, if you were on the city and you're living on the Upper East Side and you're working at Blackstone, you better be close to a subway route a subway stop, because you need to get to, you need to, get to, to FIDI to do your work 70 hours a week, right? If you were, if you were uh, working in, in Charlottesville at the hospital, you may want to live in Belmont or in Fifeville or t whatever it may be. If, if Zoom allows you to be a digital nomad and work for a New York City firm, if Zoom and Skype and Facebook and virtual interactions allow you to work for a D.C. law firm, a D.C. business, an Arlington firm, Nashville, New York City, Connecticut, whatever the hell it may be, whatever sector it may be. And if you can do your work like this from a home in Albemarle County and earn a paycheck that's New York City money or Arlington money, why the hell would you still live in New York City or Arlington? I repeat, I'm going to say it again. H-E double hockey sticks, not hell. H-E double hockey sticks. H-E double hockey sticks. Why would you... Live in an, if you're able to work remotely, or if you're able to work remotely even a portion of the time, and then commute into work the other portion of the time, why would you live in a pack, densely, urban, expensive environment when you're on top of people and it's the hot spot for this type of spread of disease? Why would you do that? You undoubtedly would be oh, more open-minded to more backyard, more space, more mountains, more outdoors, more activity, more work from home, to offices, more space. Maybe you had a tie with the University of Virginia when you went to UVA before you went to your New York financial firm. And you said those four years were amazing. You will see in the next 12 months the same situation that happened when Huffington Post and the USA Today and these national media outlets 10 to 15 years ago, they called Charlottesville, Virginia, the best place to live in America. Everyone remembers that. All our real estate values went up. All our real estate taxes went up. And we had a flood of out Yankees hit Charlottesville and Central Virginia. That's going to happen in the next 12 months. So if you want to make some money, and everybody wants to make some money, if you want to make some money and you're on the cusp of buying a house, buy it now. Buy it now. If you're on the cusp of trading up, like we did, okay, do it now. Because there ain't no listings on the market, and it's going to go like that. I want to play the sizzle reel of why location may not be so important anymore. Judah, do you have that ready to go? Yeah. All right. Quentin Beckham, we'll count you down here. Quentin Beckham on why location may not be as valuable in three, two, and one. With some agents watching... What do you think is going to see the pop the quickest? We have no inventory on the market. You've educated me. Keith's educated me. We've got some inventory issues here. Where are we going to see this pop? What's going to happen? 
you know, there, there's always inventory. It's just that it's so cyclical. Things pop up, and, and we've had such a crush of buyers that they have immediately been pushed through. And if you blinked, you, you missed the train. And so you're just standing there wondering if the train ever was really there. So there is inventory. It does roll out. And I think what we've been seeing is we've been seeing a more even pace of supply and demand. We've been seeing more local buyers and sellers and fewer people from out of area. And I think you're going to continue to see that. I think where things are going to change is some of the way we think of our home is going to have to modify you know, there's, there's a great simplicity to living in a condo that a lot of people can, can run towards. But in the world of COVID, that takes on a whole different scenario. It takes on a whole different meaning. Um, living out in the country on four acres feels like a nightmare to me. I, I don't want to mow that much grass. I don't want to care for that much acreage. But we have people that are moving from suburbs and Reston, Northern Virginia, Fairfax, and coming down because the idea of having a buffer between them and everybody else is really good after 90 days of looking out their window and into their neighbors. And so I think you're going to see some of that balance out. And, you know, we've always talked about uh, there's, there's three things that, sell, that tell me how much a house is worth, <clears throat> uh, or whether it's going to sell in its location, condition, and price. Suddenly location isn't as valuable as it used to be. And all the equations surrounding it are in the process of changing. Um, so we're going to go to Kelly Jackson. You are live on the I Love Seville show. Let's get the graphic in place, ready to go. Kelly, I'm going to get out of your way. Introduce yourself to the viewing public. Sure. Hey, Jerry. Thanks for Our having pleasure. me on. Thank Happy you. Show. Um, I'm Kelly Jackson. I'm part of, of a, part of a family franchise. Yeah. Okay. We still got you here. Yeah, I can hear you. Your connection's a little spotty. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, I can hear you. Yeah, get as close to that Wi-Fi as possible for us. So you have. Okay. Yeah, as close as possible for us. That'd be great, Kelly. Um, so sixteen different, sixteen different Panera breads. That is impressive. How do you get to that point here uh, locally of having so many? Sure. So we started. Um, my dad worked for Panera Corporate in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, we then moved into a, um, joint venture. Um, we did great with that, grew Virginia, Pennsylvania, DC markets, um, and decided we wanted to slow down a little bit and do our own franchise. Um, we fell in love with Charlottesville and the surrounding areas. Um, so we moved here and just were able to keep growing our business. It's amazing. Um, you're, you're loud and clear here. It's sounding good. Judah, how's it sound to you? Pretty good there? All right. We're, we're sounding good, Kelly. This is great. We're in a good spot here. Okay. All right. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. COVID-19 has changed so much. Um, I think um, from the top to bottom, everyone's obviously been impacted. So let me get out of the way and see how it's impacted you guys. I mean, 16 restaurants, you guys, I think, are, I know this category really well. You guys are the top um, position holder um, from a number of units in central Virginia, uh, from a restaurant standpoint. So we're talking guys with the family that is tops from a number of restaurants here in the area. How has COVID-19 impacted you guys? It's hurt. I mean, I think we're hurting just like any other family owned business. We just happen to have more locations. Um, so, you know, when COVID started, our sales dropped about 70%. It hurts. You know, we're in great college markets. 
We love UVA. We're at Liberty. We're at Virginia Tech. You know, we're in Harrisonburg. And when those students left, it killed us. Um, I feel you, um, and I appreciate your honesty there. Um, what did you guys do? Now, you guys were one of the best at doing this. Um, I'm, I know it comes from the top down. You guys have the value of a drive through um, You have the value of um, you know, some good systems in place to pivot quickly with some curbside pickup here. How did, quickly did that stop the bleeding, and how close are we potentially to returning to what we were, say, Feb 1? Because I think your business is an indication of the health, in a lot of ways, of our local economy. Sure. So the good news is um, right now at most of our locations, um, we're only down, I say only, but we're down 30 to 40 percent still, but it's climbing. Um, our locations that didn't have a drive through got hit twice as hard. Um, so, you know, we quickly had to create a new business model, um, ramp up our delivery advertising, um, you know, change everything to be able to be curbside. Um, and we were able to do that pretty quickly because of the infrastructure we have locally, um, but also with the help of Panera Corporate. You know, um, it's nice to have the backing of a very strong, loved brand um, that could help us with some of these processes. So, you know, drive through um, was a huge player for us at the very beginning. Um, very well said. Very well said here. How about the family? How about you guys, um, C-suite, ownership team? When this is hitting the fan here, give us um, perspective into fear and vulnerability. We ask this of all our guests here. I mean, I was putting this in perspective. I'm like, how am I going to take an in-person show and do it Skype virtually? We had to change the model completely. We had to buy thousands of dollars in new equipment. I was, I was scared. I was afraid. I was not sleeping. One week, and I'm going to get at one week, Lisa, it was, or one week, Kelly, excuse me, one week, Kelly, it was like hell. You know, it was just so yep. scary. Your thoughts? You know, with 16 locations, obviously the investment is very, very right. high. Um, and who knew what this was? We still really don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, you know, we're thankful for getting to get into phase two by Friday. I think that's really going to help us. Um, but yeah, there was like an O-S-H-I-T, what are we going to do moment. Um, so, you know, initially, um, my family, my husband my, and I took an automatic 50% pay cut. Um, we were lucky enough that we didn't have to terminate anybody. We kept all of our employees. We obviously had to furlough them. Um, but they're all back now. Um, and we're hiring. We're hiring for all positions at all of our locations, which we're like really excited about uh, being able to do. I love it. I love, I love her energy here. Um, what, what do, how, how about the landlords? I mean, you're in some class A spots here. I mean, you open in sure. the best of the best locations. You're paying premium spots. Um, I mean, I can't imagine that Fifth Street spot is inexpensive. I can't imagine any of your spots are inexpensive here. How do, do they work with you? Do no. they work with you at all? Or are they like, come on, you're Panera Bread. You got this. No, they know us. Um, they know my husband, Adam, who's the president of our company. Um, he worked tirelessly night and day because obviously with 16 locations, it's 16 different landlords with 16 different deals and conversations. Um, we were fortunate that we have a great relationship um, with all of our landlords and, you know, they helped us and we couldn't have done it without the help of the great local communities and they want us there, which makes us feel yeah, great. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to throw this to, to Kelly's point here and she's not going to say this because she's humble. Paneras are good for the landlords, the Paneras get people coming to the shopping centers and get people then going to the stores and spending money. So the landlords want Panera Breads in their shopping centers because they're an attraction um, to the shopping centers. Um, the team members. So I'm going to ask Daniel this. Kaufman, public fish and oyster, co-owner at Pronto. We have this interesting dynamic happening where a lot of the staff can sit on the sidelines, collect unemployment, as opposed to coming back to a phase two reopening, 
where s restaurants might be in capacity not making full money. This might not be impacting you as much. Your model's different. Certainly impacting the service model when you're making two thirteen an hour and relying on tips to make some money. Can I get some of your intellect on this topic anywhere you want to go? Sure. So the great thing about being a family guys is that um, people know us. We know their families. We know their kids. Um, you know, we know what's happening in their lives. Um, we walk into a, well, not now, but before COVID, we walk into any cafe, know our employees' name, give them hugs. Um, when we said that they could come back, they were excited to awesome. come back. Um, I think the safety measures that we put in place for them made them feel really comfortable. I mean, everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's getting a temperature check. Um, you know, we put plexiglass up, which obviously is an added expense. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, everyone was ready to come back and pitch in. And, you know, when we didn't have enough, um, you know, product going out, they were the first to jump on cleaning something or we did um cafe dance competitions on tiktok nice. and things to keep the culture exciting and tell them how much we love them and i think that really impacted how they wanted to come back great answer she's killing this interview right here hit the like button guys share the show right now for kelly jackson 16 panera breads um the reason we're spotlighting her is because she and her family have a tremendous impact on hiring in the community how many team members um across the 16 I count on you guys um a little over 600 good night and, good for you and um you know again we're hiring so we hope more. <laughs> wow, that is a little over, that is impactful. This is an impactful company right here. How about this, the future of restaurants? Are we concerned that it's not so much dine-in anymore? I think um, restaurants are gonna have to adjust. I think patios are a great option. I think there should be investment in great looking, comfortable patios. Um, I think we're going to keep doing curbside regardless of what happens um, just because people have a different level of how safe they feel. Um, and that's been a great resource. So we're going to do that. We're going to keep, you know, plugging money into marketing for delivery. Um, and I think everyone's going to have to reevaluate their business model and how people are going to be eating. Um, I think for the summer months, especially here in Charlottesville, outside is an amazing opportunity for all restaurants i agree i think she's all over this kelly you're getting a lot of peeps give a lot of people giving you props jen lore if i'm messing up your last name jen i apologize she says i love you and i'm proud to call you family um bob schwartz jamie's dad i think is watching in the northeast he says i'm enjoying this interview we have someone named laura who's watching in roanoke she says, I love this family and Panera Bread. Um, thank you for highlighting what they do locally, Jerry. Let's throw this question to you. The, the value of the drive-through at this time. We saw Bodo's yeah. Bagels change their model completely and do the drive-through. You guys have had the drive-through all along. Some of your competitors, which we don't have to name, have had the drive-through all along. It's no, no secret that the top performing restaurants in Charlottesville and in Albemarle County have drive-throughs. It's no secret. Okay, Absolutely. I'll get out of your way. You're smarter than me on that topic. Give me, give me some insight on that. Drive-throughs, we, we kept open from the beginning when other restaurants had to shut down. There are not many drive-throughs in, in restaurant markets that serve fresh, healthy, good for you food. Um, sometimes you want a burger from a drive-thru, everybody does. But that's not sustainable everyday eating. Um, so the drive-thrus were up about twice as much as our cafes without the drive-thru. So that was really a saving grace that we already had that system in place. Um, and I think we were a great option for people that did have to go to work to pick up a healthy salad or a healthy sandwich or in a coffee on the way to work. Um, 
So I think that helps. Good question here coming in from Croze. Jerry, I love your show. This is from Chris Turner. Jerry, I love your show. I try to watch every time. I love how you feature community leaders. Um, my wife wanted me to relay this to you. Thank you for spotlighting a female-owned business. Thank you for spotlighting this businesswoman. Please do more of this in the future. And please ask your guests if she has plans of expansion and what we can expect from them. Good question. Well, thanks for saying that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, you know, we are always looking for great opportunities. Um, and, you know, as you've talked about on your show many times, you know, the real estate market is going to continue to change. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, and so we never will say never. We are in the business of growing businesses. So, um, you know, if anybody has anything that looks of interest, Email me. Shoot me up. I'd love to have a discussion. I, I, you, you heard the lady, Johnny Pritzloff and, and Lee Hughes. I see the commercial real estate agents watching the program right now. You heard the lady. Give the businesswoman what she wants over here. All right. It, do you see a future where maybe the restaurant game is not so reliant on class A real estate? I mean, is there a future because of the drive up where, where you don't have to have the primo end cap um, and the primo shopping center? What are your thoughts on that topic? Um, I feel two different ways. One is if you're doing, um, a mainly delivery business, you don't have to have, you know, big box real estate in barracks or fifth or stone fields, you know, you can get something cheaper because you're delivering it. So if you're delivering and catering is a majority of your business, I wouldn't spend the money on prime real estate at all. But if you're trying to get people to dine in, um, you know, we're successful at a lot of these outside shopping centers where people are walking and shopping and popping in for us and for what we offer, we think it's reasonable and what we want to continue to do. So I think there's a place in the market for both. There you go. There you go. Guys, blow up Kelly Jackson's phone right now with text messages and emojis right here. Let's blow up her phone. Hank Lloyd says this, um, the Jacksons are truly the best people out there. I love them all and what they do for this community. Give the show a like and a share on any of these Facebook pages, and let's hit Kelly Jackson's phone up right now. Let me throw a few more questions to you here. Um, Charlottesville, Virginia, um, Central Virginia. Are you bearish? Are you bullish? Are you long on Charlottesville? I mean, and, and give me the reasons why. Give me a hot take on this. What do you think about uh, the next 12 to 18 months here? It's a scary time here. There's a lot of uncertainty here. I do, but I think um, it's scary, and I get that. But I think this Charlottesville community is so in love with the community I think I see neighbors helping neighbors, people supporting, you know, we have donated, you know, $7,000 in gift cards to UVA. We are donating them lunch and breakfast once a week because we love the community. Um, I think this community is going to look more appealing to people, like you said, who are living in DC, paying those prices, living on top of each other, you know, living in New York. Everyone loves Charlottesville. There is nothing not to love. We have it all. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling positive that the restaurants that had to close are going to be able to reopen or start a new concept. Um, I'm confident that the downtown is going to figure out a way to make it work. Um, and I think we have great people here, and we're not willing to let our community fail. Dude, I love this lady. Um, let's cut that, what she just said right there, into a highlight clip. Right there. And let's play that on tomorrow's show, please. That right there, I feel the same about her. I, I, I am bullish on Charlottesville because of the people in Charlottesville and Central Virginia. I completely agree. Uh, the couple trends that I'm missing here. You, you, it's rare that we get to speak with somebody. You know, 16 Panera speaks for itself. Other trends you're watching, you're seeing that we should be highlighting that I'm missing here. You're hearing stuff from some really smart people, probably at corporate. Trickle it out to us to help us learn as well. Um, I think people are focusing a lot more on the quality of food that they're eating. Um, so Panera, we're having a huge push. We've already had a push in that direction, but we're pushing definitely more in that direction. Um, I think people here in Central Virginia want to eat healthy. They care about their body. They like a lot of farm-to-table things. Um, for us as Panera, but also as a family-owned business, 
Our business model is a little different. We feel like giving back to the communities that we're in um, will then have the community support us and grow our business. Um, so we really take a different philanthropic look on business. We would rather give and then receive than receive than give. Um, and I think that's going to be a really hot trend, um, not only in restaurants, but across businesses across the board. I, I, I a thousand percent agree thousand percent agree. If you don't even focus on the winning and you just focus on putting out heady vibes and good vibes in the universe, you're going to win on the back end. You don't even have to focus on it now. I a thousand percent agree. And people are loving this lady right now. Samantha Six, you're rocking it, Kelly. I love you, girl. Sarah Miracle, the Miracles love the Jackson family. They truly have an impact on the lives of people in the community, ours included. Uh, Maureen Strazulio, this is a phenomenal interview. Great interview, Kelly. More comments like this. We can spend the next 10 minutes reading positive comments about Kelly right here. Uh, all right, I'm going <laughs> to, she freaking loves this. I love this. I love it too. I love the background of her house too. It looks very nice. Um, people are saying very, very spiritual you are. You're very spiritual today, Kelly. I love this. Um, um, all right, let, let, me, let me throw this to you. I want to give you guys some props, and, and I want to encourage all the restaurant owners that are watching the show to consider a very small thing that like even Panera has done. So she was so generous to give our team lunch. And in the process of eating this lunch, we've eaten a hell of a lot of takeout food lately because let's be honest, the dining rooms are closed, right? So we, we like good food, um, so we've eaten a hell of a lot of takeout. Your boxes are phenomenal for takeout. And I think as the pivots, as the pivot has happened in COVID and as local restaurants have tried to change their model to be more curbside and to go, I would encourage all the restaurant owners that are watching the show to consider a box like Panera's where the food really maintains its quality upon a revival because oftentimes the to-go boxes, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but the to-go boxes that I'm getting are almost steaming the food because they don't have holes, and then right. the food when you get it is not what it should be. Their boxes don't have... Uh, how about that topic? I know that's minutia, but that really had it... We were all saying that today. Thank yeah. you. You know, um, you know, like I said, we're, we're lucky because we have a big brand behind us, um, you know, that obviously creates all of these great packaging and things for us. Um, you know, it's constantly evolving. The packaging we had five years ago is not the packaging we had four years ago, three years ago. Um, it's constantly changing to improve the quality of our products. And especially with COVID, um, I think that gave us an extra leg up. Our food stayed fresh. It stayed hot. Um, people could travel with it easily. And it's easily wiped down if you want to wipe it down before you eat it. Um, so I think I agree with you. That was a big... Big bonus, big it, plus it goes, for us. It goes a long, long way. Debbie Brewer says, I absolutely love Panera Bread. Um, their coffee's fantastic. More comments coming in like this. Dave Warwick, Three Notch. Hello, welcome to the show. Daniel Kaufman's going to join us in four minutes. All right, we'll give you a final word to go anywhere you want on any topic. Um, you know we're a platform of hope and positivity. So we'll give you some time to think about that here as we let folks know that Daniel Kaufman's coming up. She owns 16 Panera Breads, um, and I, I want to emphasize the value of local with this brand and this family with hiring of over 600 people in our community and the philanthropic nature of the brand to giving back to people who need um, generosity, and they are doing that. They, they may have a big brand, but it's a localized brand. All right, why don't we close on this? You are being well-watched right here. Anywhere you want to go on any topic with any message, the show is yours. Sure, whatever community you're living in, whether it's Charlottesville or Virginia or any community, support. Not only supporting your neighbors, support your local businesses, support your frontline workers. Um, and there's many ways you can do that. You can help out with time. You can help out with money. You can help out by purchasing goods, going to restaurants. Any little bit helps. So go out and do that. You're awesome. Thank you. For having me, thank you, thank you. I had you the best so time. You were so good. You have a good day. Thank you for joining us. All you right, too, bye. Kelly. She's phenomenal. I love it. I love it, um, guys. Blow up Kelly's phone right now. Send her text messages left and right. Blow up her Facebook page. And how about you hit that like button right now on the stream? Hit the like button and share it for Kelly Jackson. How good did she do? I love her energy and I love her positivity. Daniel Kaufman, my friend, we're going to you in T minus two minutes. Two minutes. 
for Daniel Kaufman. Daniel Kaufman, the man behind Public and the co-owner of Pronto in the, uh, on the UVA corner. This guy has got two phenomenal brands, uh, a courageous individual, a leader, undoubtedly like all of us impacted by COVID. We're going to talk about his pivot, uh, how we made some changes, the fact that we're reopening again, what that means for public, and what that means for uh, restaurants locally. Phase two, Friday, 50% inside reopening capacity. Interestingly, the restaurants in the city of Charlottesville continue to be the most vulnerable of all of them in Central Virginia. You ask me why? Well, the answer is simple, money. The cost to rent a building in the city of Charlottesville is as expensive as it gets in Central Virginia. As a result, many of the restaurants in the city of Charlottesville are smaller when compared to their Almaro, Louisa, Orange, Green, Fluvanna counterparts. They choose a smaller footprint because you charge rent by the square foot you use for your business. So you have a manageable dining room, smaller square feet. That makes sense from a business model pre-COVID because you're keeping your overhead down. Post-COVID, having a tiny dining room when you can only use 50% of it is going to limit the amount of incremental revenue you can make. So I repeat, and I've been saying this for 30 days on this platform, the businesses in the city of Charlottesville, because of the limitations of the city, specifically 10.27 square miles of real estate in the city, the limitations of the city, lack of space, are hurting the businesses in the city and putting them at a disadvantage to their counterparts in the county who have much more space to work with. I, again, respectfully encourage our Charlottesville City Council to do something of support for the business community besides delaying the collection of meals tax. They didn't even say you don't have to pay the meals tax. They just delayed them. Okay? You just could pay them a little bit later. You still had to pay them. I'm imploring respectfully the city to do something for the business community, City Hall and City Council. Please. Let's go to uh, Skype, Jude. I'm going to welcome Daniel Kaufman to the show. It's ringing now. This man is the uh, vision behind public, and public has one of the best uh, happy hours out there. He's always sharply dressed, always has uh, something funny to say. He's a leader. His name is Daniel Kaufman. Um, Judah, can we welcome him to the broadcast? We have the green light from Judah. You are live for Charlottesville, Central Virginia, and the I Love Seville show. Daniel, how are you, my friend? I'm well. How are you, Jerry? Doing well. You seem, uh, you seem, you seem chipper. You seem like uh, you're getting the chutzpah and the spirit back, huh? Is it coming back? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I think yesterday we got some promising news. Um, you know, uh, phase two, we were, kind of, we were waiting on that. Um, again... I'm hoping it didn't come too soon. I think we were doing this right. Um, phase one felt really good to be able to do, some, you know, move towards some semblance of normal. It was a step in the right direction. Um, we didn't fully embrace it like some places did. We did kind of a hybrid system where we kept takeout, but we said, if you want to sit on our patio, sit on our patio. We didn't do service out there, and that and that was more of a nod. Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, some of our staff just didn't quite feel right yet, uh, and with respect to them, we decided to, to hold off on, um, on getting them involved in that front line, so to speak, for the time being. Uh, but also, I had very limited staff come back. Um, I think you wanted to touch on that a little bit later. I do, um, I do, I do. I just want to get a feeling for you of how things are going. while, you know, albeit uh, it wasn't the most ideal system, but it was something. Um, so we were able to, you know, stop the bleeding. Um, I think, you know, speaking from, from Public Fish and Oyster, Public Fish and Oyster will survive this. Um, I have the utmost confidence that's going to happen. Uh, phase two is a promising 
um, step in the right direction, I think. Uh, we have a number of obstacles to clear before we can actually engage in it. We can touch on that later. Um, but I'm feeling a little better. There were a lot of sleepless nights, and there still are. Um, still have a lot of sleepless nights. There's still a lot of things um, troubling. However, um, you know, every day seems, at least as far as Charlottesville's restaurant scene goes, um, a little more comforting. Granted, you know, the, the, the national picture is looking very different. Um, it's, a, it's a sad time we're living in right now. Uh, a lot of problems sort of exacerbating our own issues as well as the issues of this country. Um, but from a business standpoint, I'm speaking only from a business standpoint, uh, we are able to breathe a little, uh, little sigh of relief. Good. You know, and I hope it stays that way. Um, yeah, my thoughts. That was good. I'm happy Thank for you. you. Um, Thank you. I, 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 I want to emphasize this, and I'm so happy, like at almost to a point where I'm a little choked up here. Um, and, and he said that public's going to make it. Public will survive. His brand is amazing. His brand is part of the community. His brand has one of the best happy hours here. This guy has busted his ass on this restaurant. And it's, just, and it's not me. It's not just me. Either. I've, I've had a great staff who has supported me all this time. Um, and I don't want to take anything away from the other restaurants in this town. Um, if anything, and this is, this, this is something I feel really good about, if anything, uh, any sense of rivalry, for the most part, or uh, competition has been completely out the window. We've been really getting each other's backs on this one. Uh, we've had a text stream going with a lot of restaurant owners, sharing a lot of ideas, um, a lot of information. A lot of really come together during this. I didn't know many, many people. Uh, involved in the scene. And while it doesn't include everyone, obviously, it has, um, my experience through this has been that, uh, that we've all got each other's backs, whether or not we're, we're in competition of each other, with each other, or whether or not um, we've had any beef in the past. Um, it's been really nice to see everybody come together and offer suggestions and discuss our own concerns, be able to, sh you know, misery loves company, and we've been in misery. And it's been really comforting to know that everybody else is, you know, feeling the same thing. It sucks, but it's at least it sucks together, if that makes any sense. I, I, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. That's a sizzle reel right there for tomorrow's show. Daniel Kaufman about the team coming together and the text chain and the rising tide and everyone coming together. So Dave- It's been really amazing. It's been really amazing. Some of the best ideas that I've got through this whole thing have been, you know, ideas that have come from some of my peers. Um, I, I know we've lost some restaurants already, um, and it's, and I, it tears me apart the idea that somebody loses something that they've worked for for a long time. Um, uh, I own, you know, as you know, I'm a partial owner of another restaurant as well. I'm not certain, uh, of the survivability of, of my newest venture. We're trying really hard, uh, the loss of UVA, you know, we were not prepared for a six month long summer, so to speak. And that's what we're facing. And, and we are a vulnerable new business, but we're fighting, you know, uh, we we're hanging in there right now and we're giving it everything we got. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it's been crazy. I hope we're doing this right. I really hope we're doing this right. I hope we're not doing this hastily. We don't want to do this again. Um, but I, we don't want to do this again. <laughs> that, that's how I feel about this. I, so I, I really hope we're doing this right. I, we intend on following all the guidelines going forward and you know, operating with a, with a great sense of uh, caution. I hope, we, I hope the same. I hope the same. You got, you're getting props from people. Um, Dave Warwick <laughs> is watching. He said, we devoured some oysters, some mussels, and a shrimp po' boy from public the other day. I absolutely love that place. Thank That's you. From for Dave Warwick. Thank you, everyone, for your support through this, because I never thought this would translate into a takeout system. I, I was in complete doubt that this might work. Now, granted, we're doing a fraction of our sales, but it's enough to keep us positive. We're, we're doing okay. Okay. I use that, you know, I'm saying that with, with a, a bit of caution. Um, but this community has really come together, changed the way they feel, you know, how they look at sit down restaurants and, and embrace this new thing we're doing, this thing we threw together out of nowhere. Um, and, and I can't thank this community enough. You know, I, I think we've, everyone's been great. How about this? How about this? And we were talking about this in the comment section and you, you have restaurant folks watching this here. The challenge of getting servers to work when they're collecting yeah. more on unemployment. 
that's been a challenge. Talk to us about that. Um, I, again, I, I really try to look at this from every angle, including theirs, the idea of safety, the idea of uh, continuity of business, the idea of, you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of us got PPP and a lot of the requirements of this is that we maintain staffing levels. Uh, we get people back off unemployment. Um, I don't think CARE Act worked well with PPP. I think they were counterproductive over another. Um, I'm really happy that there was something there to get everyone through this. Um, some people got a raise out of this through uh, um, through the, the unemployment, particularly the $600 bonus. I don't fault anyone for, for, for not coming back on payroll because of that. I think their, uh, their hands were tied to a certain extent, you know, that, Obviously, you can point to the the concern about being in close proximity with other people. It's an easy out for coming back to work. I get that 100. At the same time, I think continuity of business is important as well. And at the end of this, we're going to need places to work. So we need these places to survive so that employment doesn't stay at 10% after this. You know, I know it's, what, a 25%? Something silly right now. But uh, I, I hope we can get everyone back to work at the end of this. Um, I am uh, no big announcement here, but uh, you know, for for part two of this, for phase two of this, uh, my intention is to um, maybe not right out the bat, but as soon as possible, get back to that fifty percent indoor capacity. In addition to doing fifty percent on my patio with proper service again. Uh, I will not force any of my staff who come, came back to be involved in table service. We will find a role for all those people, um, but I will need to hire um, new staff to take care of guests at the table. And I expect it will be a challenge. Um, you know, that, that $600 bonus doesn't run out until the end of July, I think. And it in turn can also be extended, I understand. Um, so. I think there are people out there who are ready to get back to work, who are aching to get back to work. Um, I think I will be able to hire. I hope we can get as good a people back as I had before, uh, because I, I don't expect um, everyone to jump back on. But uh, I know there's a lot of people itching to get back to work, and I hope uh, we can find each other and uh, you know we get the right people, we get them trained properly, we get the people who subscribe to our notion of hospitality. Um, and really believe in what we do here. Um, and I hope everybody's able to do that as well. It's gonna be a challenge, I know that. It's, it's going to be a challenge. I've got ads up already and, and uh, what this process looks like. Is that, two more questions for you. The, yeah. the final question for you is gonna be, you have a final word where you can go anywhere you want, you can say anything you want, do anything you want on the show here. We respect what you have to say. Before we get to that, is, is the rehiring the rehiring of staff to reopen, where does that fall in the pecking order? I mean, obviously having the money to reopen is number one. <laughs> yeah. Where does it fall in the pecking order of reopening priorities there? Right, number one, if we're gonna do dine-in service, I don't have the staff currently to do that. Understood. So I, I need to do that as soon as possible. Um, I think all of my current staff are on board to keep operating in some capacity. Um, I said it before, I'm not going to force anyone to take service at a table if they're uncomfortable going to a table. Um, I, I won't do that, uh, nor will I replace them, so to speak. I'll need more people and we'll find roles for everyone. But, uh, you know, we got to start moving now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to look on sort of the bright side of some of this. Um, we've been open for six years now, um, and we haven't taken the opportunity to stop what we're doing and, you know, get the place pretty up in six years, we haven't really done a lot of aesthetic maintenance um, out of this thing. It has been the fact that we've been able to do that. Um, we've refinished our floors, we've refinished our tables, we've refinished our bar surfaces. Uh, we've done a lot, we've painted a lot of surfaces. This place is looking really nice. Um, and uh, I, I'm really proud of the new restaurant that guests are gonna be coming into. They're gonna be seeing a, a, a you know, a, a nice facelift on this, and, and I'm proud of the work that we've done in that time. Um, but, uh, you know, if I can say it again, I want to say it again, the, the community has been amazing. You know, I, I know a lot of people are in disagreement with a lot of ways um, some places proceeded, but 99% of the guests that I've interacted with during this time 
have been amazingly understanding, amazingly generous with the staff. Um, you know, my staff are getting picked. Great. Um, it, it's it's unbelievable that this came together the way that it did. We don't agree on everything. We won't agree on everything. Uh, a lot of us probably won't agree on how we're proceeding right now. But for the most part, everyone's been really respectful and supportive. Um, you know, there's you know the occasional shamer out there when you do something they don't like, and and uh, you know we're all guilt ourselves probably. But on a whole, um, I been really taken aback by how cool everyone has been through this whole thing. Well, it speaks to the community and it speaks to the restaurant you and your team have built. Public is freaking awesome. And Thanks. get to public guys ASAP and support the team and support a guy that's built a great brand. Um, thank you, Daniel, for your time. And we of will course. be in there in the next couple days to get some food. Thanks, bud. You have a good day. You as well. I'll all see right. you. See you, Daniel. Get, right. to, get to public. Get to all of them. Get to all of them. Get to all of them. You have no idea. You do. Maybe you guys do. I don't want to say you have no Do the These folks have, especially the, the restaurants, have bled and sacrificed and given up their, like, holidays. Where do we go on the holidays? The restaurants. What are our memories of? going and celebrating special occasions in the restaurants, in the public, in the Maya, in the Oak, you know, Oak Hearts, in the Tavern and Groceries, the special memories. While we're making our special memories and getting the photos for this, that we'll look back and, and get nostalgic and get you know, choked up and remember happily, while we're doing that, the folks that were enabling and allowing us to build those memories in some part where the hosts, the restaurants, where the memories were created. So support the folks that have helped create quality of life for us. We literally today talk with a restaurateur in Kelly Jackson who has 16 Panera Breads and over 600 team members. There you have Daniel Kaufman who's got Pronto Pasta on the UVA corner he said, I'm not sure that Pronto is going to survive. They were here earlier in 2020, brought us food, talking about the opening of Pronto with Greg and Johnny Garver and Daniel. And the four of us were celebrating and reveling in the opening, the grand opening of a, of a, a, a quick serve uh, pasta brand on the UVA corner that had unlimited franchise potential. They put their hard-earned money into it. They bust their tail. They sweat doing the build-out. They have everything ready to go. They open their doors for what is a dream, an American dream of owning your own business. And if you're owning your own business and you're a restaurant guy and you're doing it on the UVA corner, you're in one of the hottest districts for being a restaurant guy in the area. And it, you open the doors that within a couple days COVID-19 hits, and you can't go inside, you don't have a curbside takeout, and you have limited patio space, and your student and your demo, customer demographic is UVA students, and they went virtual. Good night, guys. I mean, ah, uh, do you not feel for it? I mean, it just like crushes me. It crushes me. Support them. I mean, who could ever predict you take most of your life savings you spend months away from your family building a restaurant, take most of your life savings, you partner with your two buddies, you find a location on the corner because UVA students are there all the time, you come up with a price point that's grab and go at eight bucks, you don't really need a patio, it's grab and go pasta. And then COVID-19 hits and everything that your model is predicated on is useless. What the heck? Oh, support them, support them, support them Friday. We can do this safely. And I'm not, in, I'm not marginalizing the health risk here. I'm not. But I encourage everyone to look at the Thomas Jefferson Health District numbers and look at how they flatlined and how they've curtailed. Look at the data dashboard. Go out and patronize them safely. I'm going to close with this. We've got a good show tomorrow. 
What's up, Roger Voisinet? Love you, Roger. Um, on tomorrow's program, Matthew Gillikin is going to join us. Um, Matthew Gillikin is a good friend of the program. He's very much, um, I say, kind of a, an activist, a man that very much understands policy and zoning and real estate, the city budget. Matthew Gillikin on tomorrow's program. He put up an interesting tidbit on yesterday on his Facebook page over a few days ago. Do you have that Facebook post ready to go, Judah, before we wind down? Minneapolis, where Floyd's murder took place, the, the, the anger with the Minneapolis Police Department is, is through the roof. Minneapolis School Board voted recently a resolution to distance itself and to cut the contract with the Minneapolis Police Department and the Minneapolis school system. Basically, the school resource officer that is positioned in the schools that oftentimes does not do a lot of stuff. In Minneapolis, the public schools have said, we're going to sever our ties with the Minneapolis Police Department. We don't want the school resource officer in the schools. Now, that is trickling over throughout the country. This is a topic we'll talk about tomorrow along with real estate, along with zoning, along with hospital furloughs, along with parking, and so much more. Gillikin is a good friend of mine, Matthew. We don't always agree, but his intellect is through the roof, and it always gets me thinking. Someone tell Matthew Gillikin I said that, please. So I guess where I'm going with this, did you put the Facebook post up, Judah? Yeah, put it back up again. A lot of folks in Charlottesville are chomping at the bit because remember, we're about 10 million short for next year's budget. And Charlottesville City Schools have a lot of stuff been cut out already. For instance, if you have a kid in elementary school in Charlottesville City Schools, there's no Spanish program anymore for you. So your kid can't learn Spanish in arguably his or her most impressionable years, the elementary years. That would annoy the hell out of me. My kid's two, he's not in elementary school, but if my kid was in a school system and in elementary school he didn't have the opportunity to learn what is arguably the most important language in the world, that would piss me off. Okay, so where I'm going with this is, we'll talk about this tomorrow with Matthew, is a lot of folks are saying we need to cut and sever the ties with the police department and public school systems because they offer very little value and in, in a lot of times they negatively impact students of color in public school systems. And if the tie is severed with Charlottesville City Schools and CPD, that opens up an additional $300,000 a year, $300,000 that could potentially be allocated to reinstating the Spanish program. So here's the question. Why don't we close on this? Matthew Gillikin tomorrow, and we're also going to have in the uh, 11 o'clock hour, Angelique Jenkins of Angelique's Mobile Kitchen. She's also opening in Dairy Market, a fabulous businesswoman, Angelique. Uh, I see her food truck on Pantops at Freebridge all the time. She's opening in Dairy Market this summer. Angelique is going to join us. I'm going to close on this. My kid's two years old. I'm trying to get perspective, okay? I, I, since my son was born and he's 25, 26 months old, my perspective on everything's changed, everything. It's open up. Um, a new level of like love and, 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 and protection and spending time together and just maybe a better person. Trey has. I love him. The question I have as a dad is to all the parents out there that are watching, would you rather your elementary school system have no Spanish program? Would you rather, rather your elementary school system have no school resource officer? You have an additional three, four hundred thousand dollars if you sever the ties. I don't have the answer. I don't know the answer. I don't have the perspective of having the experience of being a parent to a kid in city schools, but you guys do. Your curriculum is being cut back. Your teachers are getting cut back. Resources are being cut back. You have an opportunity to scoop up an additional 300K by potentially severing a tie with the CPD and school resource, resource officers in, 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 in public schools. It's a topic worth considering. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Today was a really good show, a really good show. I love you guys. Give it a like and share and tell your friends about the I Love Seville show. Take care. Keep it going.